also signed the same treaty, which they're today fighting to try to get the United States to honor that treaty and uphold that treaty, because they've upheld it their end. So um, that's why we're here, and you know, again, thanks for coming, and maybe Tracy, if you want to say a few words, then we can start the film. Uh, oh, again, you know, the patent trader did this eight o'clock thing, so I, um, I, I'm just thinking maybe someone, you know, people are gonna come and be disappointed, but we'll start it anyway. Um, but maybe Tracy, if she wanted to say a couple words before I begin, and um, thank you. If you have questions afterwards, we'll, you know, could be the discussion. Thanks, Amanda and Frank, for uh, all your hard work in organizing this. Um, Amanda was right in saying that we chatted about doing this, but she was a little bit humble in telling you that it was really all her work. Uh, I just was the talker. So as you know, all talk and no action doesn't really uh, get you too far. But um, I wanted to just share with you a few quick thoughts, and then, and then we'll get to the film, which I'm sure is really great. Um, one is that a few years ago, I knew none of this stuff. I didn't know that... Um, large populations of native people were, you probably knew all this stuff, but I didn't. I didn't know that large populations of native people um, died due to the germs that came from European um, uh, explorers and settlers um, in the 1415 and 1600s. Um, I, I didn't know how poor people were on reservations. Um, I would hear, um, I really was sort of really out of the loop and, and um, I work in animal welfare and animal rights. I teach courses uh, at Purchase College and Pace University about animals and society, and, and then um, lately a new course uh, about nature and society, kind of looking at our connection, or, or really our lack of connection with the natural world and why that is today. Um, and, and so I, I um, back in, when, when I was doing a lot of work in animal welfare, I heard, uh, through Amanda, I heard about uh, this huge hog factory on an Indian reservation out in South Dakota, Rosebud Reservation. And it was gonna be, it was in the process of being built, and it was like, gonna be the largest hog factory in the world. And, um, and so needless to say, I, you know, my antennae went up and I thought, I gotta do something about this. I gotta get involved in this. I was working with an animal welfare foundation at the time and kind of convinced the, uh, president of it, you know, to let me go out there and see what I could find out. And so that's the trip that I made with Amanda three years ago. And, and it's changed a lot of, come on in, it's changed a, a lot of the course of uh, what I feel is important in my slant on things. And that's what I just wanted to really briefly share with you. Um, because I didn't have any exposure to this stuff. And maybe some of you are sitting there now thinking, well, all this stuff is well and fine, but it's the 21st century and we gotta get with it, you know? And the stuff that we're talking about is really nice and huggy-feely and all that stuff, but it's not really relevant. It's not really relevant to today. And I, I take, um, you know, I challenge that assumption. And, and I say to you that it's extremely urgent. Um, and, and, and I just wanna share with you why I think that, and that um, um, we, we come from a culture that so much is ingrained to think hierarchically, to think that there, there is um, a God above and hell below, and, um, and in between, everything is stratified, everything is, ha has its level, and uh, this comes from Aristotle's great chain of being, that humans are above animals, and animals are above plants, and humans, animals, and plants are above the dirt, and the ground, and the earth. And, and um, so much of, I think, the pickle that we're in today is due to this kind of thinking. And, and it's high time and without a moment too soon to change that. And I think that indigenous people and their ways is a way to do that. Now, when I started to learn about native tribes, I would hear, well, a tribal council president signed a contract with a hog factory. And, or, you know, or they agreed, a tribal pre, uh, council president recently of the Goshu tribe recently agreed to have nuclear waste, uh, you know, garbage dumped on their, on their reservation. So, hey, if that's what they're doing and they don't care, why should we? Well, you have to kind of get into it a little bit more and look beyond just the, 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 the curtain. And you have to go behind the curtain and see that tribal council governments are puppet governments put in place by the U.S. federal government. They're not representative of the traditional way of governing that indigenous people have done. And um, that's just a small example. Um, um, one thing that I wanna 
leave you with is that I was recently researching something about the history of humane education. And, and to those of the few of us that are sort of involved in um, the protection of animals, humane education has a special meaning. It means teaching people of all ages, but especially little kids, to be kind to animals. And, um, and I was reading a document, very well respected by people who are historians, written about the history of humane ed. And, and you can find, once you're sort of tuned in to this way of thinking, you'll find countless examples. So here I am, I'm reading this, and it says that humane ed started in 16, and okay, I'm not good with names or dates, and I thought of this driving over here, so I don't have, but it started in 1671 by John Mill, a philosopher, you know, or, or I forget exactly the philosopher, but it was an English philosopher, and you know, and then it was picked up again in the 1700s by this philosopher. The concept being is that uh, young white boys growing up were going to become the, um, um, they, they were going to be, they were going to inherit the land of their, of their fathers. And therefore, that meant that they, they had cattle and chattel, and that they had slaves, perhaps, and that they also had animals and um, um, under their dominion, if you will. And they needed to be raised to be responsible stewards. This very much is the basis of Western thought's concept of you.